I mean, you could literally light this money on fire and you'd pretty much have the same effect. Probably more because you could YouTube it and get more views. There is utterly no way that Dignitas will get anywhere close to an ROI off of this. Dignitas can't even sign sponsors right now. I mean, you could literally light this money on fire and you'd pretty much have the same effect. Probably more because you could YouTube it and get more views than Dignitas gets on their videos. I, I might I might like blink twice for a contract like this for like someone like Afrobu. Even then it would be overvalued or someone that's like really actually valuable. Even if, so to be clear, even if he's the best player in the league, I don't know if he's worth this. The only player that I might say is even close to this is probably Bjergsen. And I don't even think Bjergsen is right now. What I'm saying is like, if Huni is the... If Huni is the factor that gets you to go to Worlds or like top top four, I still don't think it's worth that price. Let's say that the only the only factor is you pay two point three million dollars for Huni, and that changes you from being sixth place in LCS to second place. Don't think it matters. I think it's still not worth it. The like like a hundred thieves like has way more brand power than they do like actually like good players and like they're the ones that are actually I, mean, I guess this, the thing that gets lost in sports is like wanting to build the winniest team versus wanting to build a team that actually makes maybe that's my problem maybe I just I need to rethink my life I, I because there's two ways to approach it right if you want to build a team that wins the most amount of games then maybe who needs a good pickup I don't really know because I don't understand people are saying in chat that he did pretty pretty good I don't know um what like, like I'm not really sure I only know it from before. If your goal is to build like the most winning team, maybe picking up like the best talent for the highest amount of money is a good strategy. Just don't conflate that with making a team that's the most successful. We've seen again and again and again that teams that get first place in the LCS are not the most profitable teams, period. They're just not. Not even close. And there may be a slight uptick in sponsor opportunities for people that place um, pretty regularly. But those sponsor opportunities are often coinciding with people who have way more brand opportunity and brand power. So what I mean by brand power is I mean like they just have more, they have more social media. They have more views. They have more, they have a successful YouTube. They have successful Instagram. They can push products better. Like TL, for example, right? TL has some pretty impressive sponsorships. They don't have that because of their results. They have that because they have, um, they have very good brand power. They have, um, they have a lot of following. They do, they do good content. They advertise well. Um, they, they, um, do good, good calls to action and they sell a shit ton of merch. That's why they succeed. It's not because they like, they win a lot in, in a way. This is a really good move for Dignitas because Huni is actually a brand within the LCS and Dignitas doesn't have any brand. And one of the things that I'm a fan of is I like taking a single player on a team, signing them to a long contract and then trying to make that person the face of your team so that you can grow your... The, the rising tide lifts all boats. But there are several problems with the Huni situation, right? Number one, this is a two-year contract, which is no time at all. So by the time you actually establish this person as a brand in your organization, they're already out somewhere else, probably to the highest bidder. So they can't... Like, Dignitas can't reliably make content around Huni because if they do, he might already be gone by the time that they actually get him established, right? And then secondly, $2.3 million... Uh, um, to pay for a player is absurd in the current ecosystem of the LCS. It's it's nuts. It's it's a huge amount of money. So like, what Dig needs to do right now is Dig needs to like go all in on the content side and start like trying to build their brand from the ground up there. Like paying for like and, and, and like it's fine to like collect high end talent and even some personalities, but not at this price. It doesn't make any sense. The, the amount of time it'll take for Dignitas, to, they'll never pay it back. I mean, like, like, I just don't know how they would. Right now, Dignitas' sponsorships are probably in the realm of $200,000 to $300,000 a year. And that's being extremely generous. That's probably how much they'll make off of a single sponsor right now. So for, for Dignitas to sign a $2.3 million contract, just think about how many sponsors it would take to make that money back. And that's just on that player. So why do people do this? Because VCs don't know how, how business works in esports. Like they think that there's a quantifiable ROI in this within 10 years. And there might be, um, or most of them think it's within like two or three years. So they think that making these big spends on players is a good value add because there's nobody actually convincing them any different. 
And their mind is like most of these people like Dignitas are coming from big sports teams, right? So to sign a player to a sports team for $20 million, it makes sense. That's something you would do because there's all kinds of ROI and deals that are attached to that. But in esports, you can convince someone like, hey, yeah, just sign this player. It's only $2.3 million. Well, they just spent $20 million signing a player on the other side of their business, right? Because Dignitas is owned by um, uh, 76ers, right? I, I think. So, like, the 76ers paying, you know, $20, $30 million for a, for a person is not abnormal. So you can just go up to them and say, like, hey, this is how much players cost. So player salaries are, are ridiculously overvalued right now. Almost nobody in the LCS deserves the salary they're getting right now, which is the very unpopular thing to say, right? Because it's like, woo-woo, like, we want to support the players and stuff like that, and I get that. But um, you don't need, like, making $2.3 million dollars, or, or what, let's just call it what it is. It's one million, one point one million, one point one five million dollars a year for for playing video games in the LCS right now. Doesn't make any sense. Hopefully, it makes sense one day. Hopefully, it makes sense because the sponsors are there to support it, because the money is there to support it. We have a healthy ecosystem. But this is just going to result in people's contracts um, exploding. Like like the 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 industry is just going to implode because it just doesn't. Th there's just no way to pay for these things. Wouldn't this turn the gaming scene into a popularity contest rather than who deserves to be there? I'd hate to see that. I have bad news for you, bro. It's already a popularity contest. Do you think the UFC is not a popularity contest? Do you think Conor McGregor is the best fighter in the UFC? He's just the loudest. Like, that's how it is everywhere. It's influencers and celebrities bring the dollars, and they're the ones that make it happen, right? Like, that's just the reality of the situation. That's how every industry is. If you don't have people that are bringing the cheddar, it doesn't make sense. Gaming stopped being about, like, the gamer personalities, like, a long time ago. Back when we were playing in basements in 2013 and we were playing for like five people, it was about it was about like the best player. Do you think that KSI and Logan Paul are good boxers? I, I don't wanna come off like I'm I'm of the position that players shouldn't make like, like I want players to make money. I really do. But I know that to have a healthy ecosystem around esports, it has to make sense. And Dignitas is owned by the seven. Let's be like really, really like real about Dignitas. Dignitas has no brand. They haven't had a brand since like the Scara days, like when there was like Scara, Cutie Pie, and the brand was the the brand was like propagated by the personalities on it. Dignitas needs to build its core audience, and like for two point three million dollars. You can build a brand. The marketing team that can go behind you for that kind of money, it's insane, right? So, like, you could, heck, you could cut it in half. You could cut the money in half. Give, give a player $1.15 million, still a huge amount of money. Spend $1.15 million on marketing and content creation for that year. Hire a whole team to do it. And you'd be way more successful as an organization. And you'd be, I would still argue that's, like, way too much money, you know? Like, 100K, $100,000 a year was a bigger budget than I had at CLG, I think, to run marketing. And it was, we did fine. Like, it's, it's just, like, if you think about how sponsorship fundamentally works in esports, sponsors are not paying because you have Huni. Sponsors are playing because you get sales, you get attention, and or you get views. So, like, I buy power is going to price your sponsorship on the amount of computers that you can sell. That's what iBuyPower is gonna do. Then they're gonna give you a little bit of a uptick, so a little bit more money, based on um, your brand. So like how, like for example, and I wanna do a video about this at some point, maybe we'll do a video about this tomorrow, or we can't, uh, this is a hot chubby thing, but uh, Wednesday maybe, but I wanna talk about like, how much of a good move it was for Monster Energy to go into Death Stranding. That was like one of the best moves that Monster made in terms of marketing. And Monster is a very creative marketing organization. That they, they try to be in a lot of things. They've like been very prominent in UFC. They've done like trucks. They've done uh, they've done like a lot of different things. They've experimented with a lot of different things. And it's one of the reasons why they're such a prominent brand is because their marketing department is really unafraid. The so there is a value to impressions and there is a value to being in the LCS and sponsoring the LC, uh, the, the LCS for sure. But that value doesn't equate or doesn't come anywhere close to like uh, like the mark that you're paying for a player. You would only pay for a player in this way if 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 like their brand was so strong that it was like a Kanye like effect. Like when you like try to 
um, sell something through them. So like, if Huni was the type of guy that could go on a commercial, do some cool content, and sell tens of thousands of product, as well as make hundreds of thousands of impressions at the same instance, that's the kind of situation where you would look at a multi-million dollar contract. When we'll pay, we'll pay um, Kylie Jenner one million dollars for an Instagram post because the combination of the impressions, the earned media, the talking about it, the um, the the actual sales is all worth that price, right? That's why Kylie Jenner is worth that price. But to pay a person like Huni two point three million dollars for Dignitas, especially for a two year contract, what you don't even have the time to build them as a brand, that is not good. There are players that become iconic. For teams, Afrimu was such a person for CLG, right? Double Whiff was a person for CLG, now for TSM, uh, now for TL. Um, uh, Sneaky was that for C9, right? High was that for C9. There are players that, that, that they become the sort of brand of the esports team that they're a part of, and it becomes extremely positive and motivating to have them there. Even in that case, though, multi-million dollar contracts don't usually make sense for those companies. Like, I could actually argue a million dollar contract for someone like Sneaky. His brand is really good. He um, gets a lot of earned media. He's a pretty good at doing calls to action for like products and things like that. He's not opposed to doing them, and he's a consistently good player. Like that might be something that you would maybe justify. But even two point three million, like again, I can't justify two point three million for even the biggest personalities in the LCS. And the problem with this is that, like if you ever watched my video on the dark side of esports, right? Um, I I talk about it. Uh, there's like a or or or, or the esports bubble. It's one of those things. We need to talk about the esports bubble. It's way the heck down here, but it's sitting at 30K views because it's a great video. And it's a video about this. It's like if you keep inflating these players' salaries, what's going to happen is we're going to reach a pinnacle where eventually a significant group of VCs is going to get scared. And they're going to be like, oh, my God, we're not making our return on investment. So we're going to pull out. And that's going to cause all of the elephants to run for the door, but nobody can get out. And it's going to cause the market to crash. And we're going to have esports salaries back at like 30 or 40K a year. Whereas we could have been much more successful if we were growing organically up from that point and we were, we were actually building businesses on fundamentals that make sense. It doesn't have to be exactly at value. It doesn't have to be one-to-one, -one, right? So if Huni is really worth, I don't know what the number is, $300,000 a year, we can pay him 500. And that's okay, right? We can pay him like, we can pay him like, 30 or 40 or 20 or 30 or 40 percent more, right? But the way the bubbles happen is when you start paying like 400 percent, 500 percent, a thousand percent. Look at cryptocurrency, right? Like 10,000 percent overvalued versus whatever the market is going to tolerate. That's how bubbles happen. That's the situation we're in esports. This is thousands of percentages higher than what it is worth to actually have Huni, period. That's the problem here. It's that we're in a situation where we are grossly overspending for players, and that will affect the entire industry negatively across the entire board. It'll especially affect it because this is a franchise league. And what's, and it's going to get more insane. This is not the end of it. I can't wait to see what like the Call of Duty franchise salaries are going to be, where it's like right now you pay 30 or 40 million for a spot. Even in the, and like that right there eliminates all of your possibility of return on investment. Like, stop right there. Stop it. Go. You don't even need to talk about player salaries. You're already done. Your business is already doesn't make sense. But then you add player salaries. And like, if I actually, I don't know if this is going to happen, but if I see a Call of Duty player making like a million dollars a year, I'm going to, I'm going to tilt. 360 degrees and I'm going to walk the other way because that's going to be actually insane. There isn't any person in the Call of Duty League that deserves like more than like 100k a year and even that's insane. Like maybe if you're like a nade shot and you're competing like that level, then we can talk. Like a very specific like brand, but that's like the crazy thing. So there's going to be like there's worse atrocities than this that are happening in the COD League and in the Overwatch League that are going to happen in those places. And and I'm sure we'll cover those. But it's just not good. It's not good for anybody that this is happening. It's good for Huni. <laughs> that's the only person it's good for. This guy is making bank. Everybody, like in the long, long, long term, it's not good for Huni either because it will crunch his it will, it will crunch his salary so much when this blows up. I mean, the other the other. I just want to offer like the other like opinion though too. Maybe the market is so good right now it can tolerate it. Like maybe maybe there is so much money in the marketplace as a result of the boom that we've had for 15 years, like maybe it can tolerate it and maybe esports doesn't crunch. 
That's a possibility, right? What could happen is that um, all of VC just absorbs all these losses because they made so much money on Uber, so much money on um, well, not Uber, <laughs> like uh, well, if they were in the first round of Uber, they did, but like they made so much money on on um, Spotify and so much money on Airbnb and all these successful companies that they got into early. It's possible that these funds just eat the just eat the whole cost of esports and keep going because it's not that much in the grand scheme of a fund. Spending ten million dollars for a team is not that much if you have like a hundred million dollar fund, right? Because you you could still qualify that as a loss. So I don't know if that actually happens, um, but like the market might be able to absorb the crunch because it's so good. But if we go into like recession the next like two or three years and then the crunch happens, like esports is going to be a big trouble. It's going to be like it's going to be really really hard to get out of this. I, it's still always better to not overvalue. Top earner Call of Duty Scump is yearly earnings are about 1.5 million. That Scump is a huge personality, right? Yeah. So this is a this is an exception to the rule. They're not paying him based on Call of Duty. They're paying they're, they're paying him based on his like influence. Like for all we know, he could actually be worth that. But that's not that. What I'm talking about is like no name people in the league that have no brand presence that are going to be making like hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. That's when you start getting like really weird stuff happening. I, I, I don't know Scump, so I don't know if he's actually worth the 1.5, but his brand is Yo, massive. 2.4 2. million on YouTube, 2.1 million on Twitter, probably uh, like some other kind of like Instagram following. This guy gets, this guy is worth a huge amount of money, but understand that's because of the content and the story and the brand power that he has. It's not because he's competing in the COD league. So they need to be paid based on their net and brand worth value. Yeah, you have to, I mean, this sounds like really forehead, but you just have to pay people what they're worth. Yeah. And again, there can be some premium because like, yeah, you're competing in the LCS and there's some earned media that comes along with that, but not nearly as much as it's happening. No way does this dude deserve $2.3 million. There's no universe you could justify that. And I feel like anybody with like a, like anyone that's ever like, looked at a business book like in the store like you were in an airport waiting for a plane and you like picked it up and you like read the back of a cover of a business book should know that that's the case it blows my mind that there are valuations like this happening and and, and like but vcs are just so crazy right the market's been good for so long that the the, the market is willing to tolerate a total loss. So right now as a VC, you can fail nine times, succeed once, and make more money doing it. That's because we're in a great market. You can bet on 10 companies. You can put millions of dollars into each company. Nine of them can fail. One wins, you're profitable. Because the exponential value, especially in tech, of a company succeeding um, is worth that much. So it's very possible that esports survives the crunch because that's just the reality. VC just takes writes it off as a loss. 76 just write it off as a loss. They're profitable enough. It doesn't matter. That's a possibility. We just have to be we just have to be way more conscious about how we're doing this. I mean, ultimately, like if esports isn't careful, it's gonna go back into the dark ages for years. It's gonna take so much longer than it. <laughs>